I think in general that um, there's there's a lot of sort of uh, I don't know fear and stigma surrounding places like virtual worlds and video games, and I think that there's certainly a lot of concern about um, you know what is this doing to our children, what is this doing to, to you know to teens, and um, I, I would actually urge them to educate themselves a little better about exactly what. Um, teens are doing in these spaces because they might actually find that, that there's a lot of positive stuff going on as, you know, as, as well as you know, the horror stories that you hear. Um, I think it, 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 these technologies are actually extremely beneficial to that age group. And so I would, I would caution any policymaker in being too quick to impose uh, too many restrictions without you know, learning all about you know, all of the details involved. My wish is the same you know, for, for the, the current state of network technologies, which is that they, they continue to allow people to um, form communities of people who are not necessarily located in the same geographical space. So, I mean, I think there are so many um, wonderful and interesting things about network technologies, but, but at the core, I mean, that, that to me is what, it, what it's really all about. So it's about connecting people uh, from different backgrounds um, and, and, and ensuring that, that they have a space to come together and form friendships that, that, that last a lifetime. Yeah, I mean, the dark side of, you know, allowing people to, to come together online and, and, and meet others out, outside of their backgrounds is, of course, you know, the, all of this, the same technology can be used to harass people, to grief people, to threaten people, and um, in the most extreme cases, to, to actually uh, physically threaten someone in, in real life. So um, I guess my fear is that the, the more data that we put about ourselves online and, and our, you know, our real locations, that that, that can be used for um, certainly purposes that, that might be a little scary sometimes. Oh, I think that's, that's, I think, you know, it's, it's actually pretty hard to predict 10 years into the future what we'll see. Uh, predicting beyond that, um, I think probably what I would hope <laughs> would, would, would be developed is some way to, to sort of breach the language barrier because I think that um, you know, within specific languages, we now have the technology to, to meet and interact with each other. But there is still, you know, a significant barrier even within the worlds that we have today, which revolves around language. And, you know, there are all sorts of other barriers, such as cultural and, and all of those sorts of things. But I think if, if we can start with language, and if we can solve that problem, then, then that's, that's like the first good place to start. But I, I, I mean, that is a, a very long-term project. Project, certainly well beyond 10 years. I actually think uh, right now things like cell phones are, are doing a much better job at uh, helping people uh, sort of furthering communication, uh, enabling communication between, uh, between people. So um, I'd actually, you know, before I even gave someone a, a computer, uh, and an internet connection, I, I would probably want to hook them up with a cell phone. And of course, all of the, the sort of internet-enabled technologies are also migrating to the cell phone as well. So, you know, there's some countries where they've just kind of skipped over <laughs> the whole like sort of computer screen-enabled you know, network technologies, and they're they're doing it all through the phone because that's that's ended up what's being most affordable.